नमस्कार मित्रों कार्यशाला वती आप सब नाइन व्याख्यान माला मंथन पंदर मिशोड मा मा स्वागत छे। आजे अपना कार्यक्रम में अपनी जोड़ेल एक निवृत्त शिक्षक उत्साही चित्रकार श्री युनुष खीमाणी साहेब श्री युनुष खीमाणी साहेबे स्नातक अनुस्नातक पदवी चित्रकार तरीके फेकल्टी ऑफ फाइन आर्ट्स एम एस यूनिवर्सिटी बड़ोड़ा खाते थी प्राप्त करेल श्री खीमाणी साहेब भारत की ख्यातनाम आर्ट डिजाइन संस्थाओं में एक शिक्षक तरीके चौबीस वर्ष नो बोर्डो अनुभव धरावे आ साथ वर्ष बेहजार मेक्सिको सरकार तरफ थी आर्टिस्ट इन रेसिडेंस शिष्यवृत्ति एट के एक स्कॉलरशीप प्राप्त करेल के जेना भाग रूपे श्री खीमाणी साहेबे मेक्सिको शहर फाइन आर्ट स्कूल में एक चित्रकार तरीके अनुभव मेलव श्री खीमाणी साहेब भारत की ख्यातनाम संस्था इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आर्ट एंड डिजाइन जयपुर खाते अंडर ग्रेज्युएट प्रोग्राम डीन तरीके सेवाओ आपेल छे। आ साथ महाराजा सवाई मानसिंह बे प्रदर्शन ट्रस्ट और जयगर पब्लिक चेरिटेबल ट्रस्ट सीटी पेलेस जयपुर खाते नियामक तरीके पोते योगदान आपेलू है उपरोक्त अनुभवों साथ साथ श्री खीमाणी साहेब न एक चित्रकार तरीके कला जगत में खूबज बहड़ू योगदान है आ योगदान ने लोग सुधी पहुंचाड़े विविध राष्ट्रीय आंतरराष्ट्रीय प्रदर्शनों काम अनुभव प्रदर्शित करेल आ योगदान सन्म्मात पुरस्कृत कर आज अपनी बात करने आवा एक निवृत्त शिक्षक नियामक प्रखर चित्रकार जोड़ाया अपना सब न अहभाग्य है अन्य बात करने बदले आज विषय आर्ट विथ इकोलॉजिकल कंसर्न विषे जाए आप सब वती आदरणीय श्री युनुस खीमाणी साहेब ने एम विषय पर बोलवा निमंत्रित करूच आदरणीय श्री युनुस खीमाणी साहेब गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू गौरव फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस मंथ एंड टॉक आई वाज अर्लियर थिंकिंग ऑफ स्पीकिंग इन गुजराती बट लुकिंग एट many non gujaratis who might want to join i decided uh, i mean we decided rather that i speak in english uh i have been uh, as goro introduced me i have been in various places in various capacities and i gave up my job in 2000 january 2019 at the city palace museum in jaipur uh, to devote myself completely to my art it is a it's a it was a big decision for me it was a, the job was not making any sense anymore and i thought that i should leave my dream life of wanting to be a full time artist i do many kinds of work which i will show you slowly uh, but uh, what has been uh, when i decided uh, to leave the job and i started thinking about what i would want to do it uh, took me about a couple of months to figure out uh, what i would like to actually start working with and devote myself to and uh, it was a difficult decision because uh, i knew i did not i didn't know what i actually wanted to do but i knew what i didn't want and uh, that was a good thing about it that uh, i was very sure that i did not want to work with synthetic material i wanted to do something that was ecologically viable i wanted to do something that was recyclable and uh, i i realized that i was should uh, work with paper mache paper has been my concern since i was the dean of the indian of the undergraduate program at the indian institute of craft and design in jaipur uh, uh while i was the dean uh, my students used to work uh, i mean near jaipur there is sanganer and sanganer was a huge handmade paper industry a very very big one with a uh, huge uh, exports uh, that uh, they do and uh, Uh, my students used to sometimes go and work there for paper manufacturers, and uh, uh, 
my students' placement also was one of my big concerns. And hence, uh, uh, I, with the students' help, I did a small survey of what kind of products are being made in paper in Sangani and how do they look at it. One is that they, they, they export paper itself. And then next, uh, on the, another level, they make products out of paper. And they export that also. You know, they pick up orders and export them. You know, and so they have been doing that for many, many years now. You know, and uh, they have almost eat the uh, sort of most of these products are all people top products, you know, and uh, they have reached, uh, I realized, a sort of a situation point where nothing more. Uh, was uh, possible or, or it was very difficult to come up with new ideas. Uh, what uh, I realized in that survey is that, that they, they have an obsession of using paper, but they do not use paper pulp. And paper pulp as a medium becomes completely different. Although it is, paper is made out of paper pulp, so no paper pulp by itself, is, is, a, is a different kind of a medium with very different characteristics, you know, and uh, it, it can become a sculptural material, it can be it is moldable, it is uh, malleable, it is, uh, so there are many things one can do with paper pulp, and this is something that has remained with me all throughout. And it is at this time when I was thinking about what I should do that I started realizing that I should start working with paper pulp. And in that sense, it's paper mesh. But paper pulp by itself doesn't do much unless you need some glue into it so that it gains a sort of a binder and a flexibility that, that one wants the material to have. Uh, and so I decided to... I, but I'll start exploring the material and see how it goes. You know, uh, now this material has great advantages. It does have certain disadvantages also. But uh, the big advantage of this material is that it is organic material. It is strong and sturdy. When it is, it, com it is completely dry. It can become very sturdy at times. Uh, it is non-toxic in nature, non-hazardous. There is zero wastage. You know, there, there is no wastage. If I go wrong, I, I soak it again and use it again. If, if I don't like something, I put it back into the water, soak it and use it again. You know, and so there is, there is no wastage whatsoever. And is it easy to make at home in a home studio situation? It is easy to work with, you know, uh, one can soak the paper, one can make a pulp out of it by, by putting it in a mixer grinder or, or in a blender, you know, and uh, work with it. And yeah, it also, uh, if the kind of Glue mixing is done well and a good flexibility is achieved. It, it can also become almost like clay that it can, it is, it is moldable. So now, and it certainly is moldable. And so it allows great details to be done in it. And uh, the, another great quality of about it is that it is uh, very lightweight. You know, so it is easy to work with, easy to carry, easy to pack, easy to transport. Uh, but the most important part is that it is a low cost material. I was, I had given up a job. I had never done a job where I would get a pension out of, after my retirement. Uh, so I was almost uh, taking this as a chance, as a sort of, a, it was a risk taking action from my side. I was digging into my meager savings, you know, for my upkeep, you know, and uh, so I wanted some to work with something that was low cost, something that was uh, that uh, did not uh, dig a big hole into my pocket, and so this this material, in that sense, is is I would say very low cost material. You know, you can use as much as you want, and it doesn't cost very much. 
you know. And so this this uh, material became a big sort of a boon for me, and I I started working. Of course, I do many kinds of work. I do I do painting. I I also work uh, uh, my on my new device, which is an iPad Pro, you know. And I also do work with paper pile. And recently, I also started working with paper, and I'm also mixing all of them together at times. And so, uh, there is a lot of experimentation, a lot of exploration that keeps on happening. I'm, I'm this day working almost all, almost all of my waking hours, and uh, it's just completely enjoyable. And I'll show you some of my works. Can Gaurav, can we start the slides, please? Yes, sir. This is a work that I had done in 1997. It's called "Washed, Wrung, and Hung to Dry." It's an oil-on canvas. Uh, it's a it's a portrayal of a shirt, you know, which is on a cloth line, uh, put up to dry. So then it indicates that it is washed and wrung, and then put. Uh, it is a. It is actually a, in that sense a self portrait. In the sense it portrays me, and it, because uh, um, I, I many times feel that the garment that we wear, you know, especially the upper garment, becomes part of you, you know, part of your skin. And so this is almost my skin that is hung there, you know, washed, wrung, and hung there. You know, so it is a it is a self portrait. Of course, there is a long story why I why I did that, and that may be a subject for another talk. Otherwise, we may overrun overshoot the time that is given to us. But this is the work that I did in 1997. Gaurav, we can't see the slide. It is visible, sir. It is visible. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now it is visible to me. Okay, the next second slide is also a shirt. You know, a shirt has been quite an obsession for me, you know, not to portray the self. It is a. It is at, at this time in 1996 that I came back. I I had a small ten uh, years stint in my family business, and I left that business and then came back to art. And so it was a also. A, a sort of an economically and uh, emotionally a difficult time for me, you know, to find my footing. And uh, um, it was at this time that I got a uh, so the uh, so the portrayal of self became very important, expressing the state of the self. At this time that I got the uh, Mexican government scholarship to go to Mexico for a year. And I was in Mexico from November 1999 to November 2000. So whole of 2000, I was in Mexico, and I was placed by the Mexican government in uh, as an artist in residence in a school called La Esmeralda. Uh, it is a school of fine arts in the in a large sprawling campus called. Uh, 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 Centro de la Arte in Mexico City, and so I was there working as an artist in residence, and uh, I did this work while I was in Mexico. So now it portrays a shirt which is hanging on a hanger on a rod. Um, this this is a painting that uh, I try. I'm trying to. It was a difficult thing because uh, when one is abroad. One realizes how Indian one is. One in India, one doesn't ever realize that. I realized that I was different in everything from the local population. I was different in thinking. I was different in seeing. I was different in my taste. I was different in how I how I looked at the world around me. How I understood the world around me. And so here is a painting that portrays, tries to say that you know that I can wear the whole world around me, but inside it will always be India. You know, so I've shown a small part of the inside, which is the map of India, and of course the images that I hold uh, in great esteem, you know, uh, uh, near the heart is Buddha, you know, and then the 
there is Krishna and Radha, and then there is Shishya, Vishnu, and Nataraj, and Mahabali Goram. Uh, can we have the next slide? The next slide uh, is is a is a also a shirt. It is held by a pin. I was looking at the Mexican muralist uh, uh, Clemente Orozco. His uh, uh, his, his uh, murals in the whole of uh, Cabanas de Hospicio in Guadalajara. And uh, what what fantastic murals he has done in the whole building. The whole building has been painted by him. And uh, Doro, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, and uh, he used his proportion. I was primarily a painter of the form, but uh, I realized that Clemente uses uh, uh, proportion in such a fantastic manner that he expresses himself completely through proportion. And so I tried uh, taking a lesson from Orozco and I used proportion. I blew up the pin and uh, I minimized or wafted the shirt, you know, the shirt becomes very small. It's like the system holding the holding us, you know, to to a small sort of a precarious train. You know. And the third work here, which I did after coming back in 2002, uh, the uh, the earlier one was 2000, and this is 2002. I did a work. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm just brought some samplings of the work. I have not brought everything, otherwise it will take a long time. Uh, and this is a work called "Women Come and Go," talking of Michelangelo. It's a, it's an installation. There is an iron board. There is an iron, and there is a painting of a shirt. It's it's oil on canvas, you know. And I can talk a lot about it, but uh, let us. Move on, and I'll show you uh, because it's important for me to show you my actual paper mache works. So we'll better move on. Can, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, uh, the the next uh, slide that uh, Gauro. Yes, sir, it's moving. I can't see it. It is with your portrait, sir. Uh, okay, I did. I did a, a, a sort of a. Uh, I was actually. I had gone to a framer shop to select frame for some of my works, and and there I realized that this is beautiful. You know, you you almost want all the frame. You know, so how can you have all the frame? So I came back to my studio and started painting the frame. You know, and so it, this is like a framer shop. You know, so. So uh, it's it's all in a velcro. So so you have frames, you have the portraits, and you can keep on moving them. So every day you can change uh, the frame, you know, or the picture, and have a new one, you know. And so I did many. I brought some samplings of what I did, you know. And so th this is like a framer shop, you know. So it, is, it was fun painting all the frames and pictures separately, and then putting them, them together and moving them and creating different combinations. You know. uh, next, uh, so I I'm have just, to see. Uh, that. Sir, I'm just doing a stop share, and then I do again. Just wait a minute. Yeah. So it's visible now. So uh, uh, no, after this. So then, uh, then I, 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 I when I started uh, paper working on paper, actually this is the one that actually triggered my whole idea of working with paper pulp. You know, uh, it was in the sense that uh, uh, I actually uh, got myself. Uh, uh, trimmer, Philips trimmer, and this came in a box, you know, and it had a casket made of uh, made of paper uh, mache, 
and this was the casket and so i i i quite liked the casket so i started drawing a uh, painting on the casket like uh, this is something like what montreal would paint you know very bright colors and very uh, next slide so this is also the mandriya uh, like cas uh, you know painting this is the same one so i painted the casket and then i realized that it, this is a wonderful material this is a uh, this was uh, my friend rahul got me uh, another casket it had got uh, when he had ordered the speakers you know? and so this is the back side of that casket and it looked like fantastic architecture and so i painted on it i added things on it and it became wonderful you know so i i started enjoying it and then i took this forward next i did many small uh, small works you know in the explorations many many actually and I, uh, it would take a long time if i start showing them but uh, one exploration that i liked was this dome you know it was also at this time that i was actually not very sure uh, whether i would be able to work with this material because it seemed very flimsy it uh, it, uh, it it was very uh, it was very humble to you know to be ambitious about <laughs> so so i was wondering whether i should continue working with this material at that time i was going to shrinagar for a visit i, I was going to shrinagar ladakh and manali uh, and uh, uh, my friend tosif you know he, he he was working with the craftsmen in kashmir you know uh, the uh, paper mache craftsmen so he said that why don't you see the paper mache work in kashmir so i in shrinagar i spent two days you know visiting all the craftsmen and seeing and then uh, the whole ambition triggered in me you know that that uh, this is a fantastic material to work with and this is this material has as uh, has great qualities about it and it it has it can also be a monument to if i want it ever, ever you know in future and so this is a larger work that i did this is a third uh, I mean another dome that I did in Salleheria Dome, so it allows you to explore things in a very big way, you know. And uh, you can paint over it, you can scratch over it, you can add textures over it, you can do many things, you know. Of course, the craft Kashmiri craftsman paints it and lacquers it, and so the material doesn't get get seen at all, you know. You don't see the material at all. they they painted so heavily and lacquered it later on that material is hardly seen but i was i am interested in the material itself i am showing the material so in next many works uh, you will see that there are material we see uh, the uh, next work is uh, is a uh, clouds over a blue bowl you know i did this bowls you know and this was nice because this this is putting paper mache on basket uh, bamboo basket that this bamboo we was make the basket you know so yeah, it was it was nice i, I realized that bamboo can be can become a good material to mix with it, you know as as a sort of an armature material and uh, this is about 2 uh, feet uh, in diameter 24 inches next this is a uh, another work you know uh, it's very difficult to explain you know because these are works that come from the mind and from the imagination but somewhere uh, i think this is the impression of ladakh that i had in my mind you know, a sort of a old ruin sort of a monument no so it's called uh, somewhere somewhere far away so it says i i was uh, at one time a faculty in sept uh, school of architecture sept university in amdavad you know and i have been in architecture schools for a long time teaching there and architecture has had a huge influence on me even city palace uh, my experience at city palace was a life changing experience it was a uh, it 
was I was fascinated by the mystery, you know. I was there for nine years and I used to still walk into those areas that I had never seen before. It was fascinating. It was that mysteriousness, that magic about the mystery, you know. And somewhere I am I am looking for that magic in my work. I am trying to see if I can get that magic, you know, that I I experienced there. This is like a like an old de- depleted tower, you know, which is going into things, but new rays are coming out of it. New, absolutely beautiful, colorful rays coming out of it. It's almost like uh, uh, the hope never dies. So this is this is this is a sort of a, I was thinking that can I do patches? You know, of, of paper mache on it, you know, and uh, on, uh, so there's it like a dome full of patches made of patches, you know, and bright colors. Though it is, uh, it by itself is not a great work, but it led me to this work, you know, where I was doing, I was do, again doing patches, you know, uh, broken pieces, you know, I, I would make a sheet of paper mache, break it up, and then put it together. And this was this was a nice ex- exploration, and I quite liked it. So this led me to uh, the next one, you know, where I, I actually used a block, a wood wooden printing block. You know, Jaipur is very well known for its wood block printing, you know. And so I used a block, you know, to take impression. So these are all like relief impressions, and I broke it up and put it together again and painted it. And I thought it was wonderful. It's called Tukde Tukde. Can we have the next one, please? So this is this is what I brought you for you. you know, this is how I take the impression of the block you know, and uh, on the paper mache sheet, and then I break it up. You know, it's lovely. It's very. It looks very organic. Can we have the next one, please? Uh, this is uh, also from the block, you know, but painted in a very Different way. It's almost like an old wall, you know, where things are dripping and there are layers of of history underneath. You know, layers of paints underneath. <coughs> this is what this is what is the magic, you know, of, of the Indian heritage you know, that, that we see. You know, I also uh, got fascinated. Uh, I mean, I, I on where one WhatsApp I received a. Um, a video by, from a friend, you know, and it showed the whole process of save making, save and gatia. You know, there is a, at home you have a machine, you press and the save comes out of it, you put it all inside, you know, and so I thought I could do that in paper machine, why not? You know, so I brought, got the machine and I, I did this, I tried this, this is a small one, it is, uh, in height it is uh, 12 inches. But uh, I am exploring this possibility further, uh, well, how one can, you know. Uh, then I was looking at, uh, I was, uh, I, I spent a week with my elder brother in Surat. I was actually, the family had to go somewhere and I was looking after him. I was babysitting him. So I was looking at Surat through the window. You know? So I took my iPad and drew, I painted my impression of Surat, you know, the city. You know, and this is what I painted on my iPad Pro. You know, and then I thought that this is wonderful. You know, there is a there is a Japanese artist, you know, called She Utotsuyama, and she works with the, she makes paper straws. You know, from old newspaper she makes straws and she works. So I started making straws, and I started building something that I thought was like a city. You know, and then I thought that I can layer it, you know, because the city is not uh, one thing, it is layered, you know, so uh, this is the second layer, then next slide please, you know, and then this is the, this is the third layer, you know, so, so I could, I could keep on adding layers, you know, and creating a whole feel of, of the city, you know, uh, in this way, of course, this is, this is a work in progress, it is not finished so uh, so I'm still working on it but I'm thinking of doing layers you know, and these are all paper straws put together you know and so this is a new sort of a way I, I've started looking at it you 
mag decide again to destroy it's almost doing i mean this is on a on a green graph board that i have but once it is taken off it would look like a mongria you know installation you know it is uh, this is right now uh, it is jotting out about 1 inch but i would want it to come out about 6 inches so it will become quite quite a really quite a construction and then i i i started uh, mixing paper mache and paper straw so there is a whole paper straw around a paper mache thing you know a friend of mine said that she finds this to be like a face and i find it like a tree and you can see maybe something else in it and uh, that's that the pleasure of it all you know yeah, and uh, this is another work that i'm like now working on it is a game from that save maker you know and here i have added a stainer in the material you know so it is it is it is part of the material so it has a different feel about it of course it is going to take a long and because i wanted it in a particular shape and i didn't want it to go outside i used a tray so i have done it in a tray so it's going to take a long time to dry you know but uh, i quite like it and i I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I hope I can take this forward. Most of these works are uh, right now small, but I visualize them as monumental in scale, in the sense that they should be done on a very large scale. And I would be very happy if I get the opportunity to actually do them on a large scale and see how they how they work, you know, how they how they can they hold. See, ultimately, I have a feeling that. Uh, the success of any artwork is how long can it hold the spectator how can long can it hold the interest of the onlooker thank you apno khub khub aabhar adarniya shri khimani sahib gani badi rasprad baato barabar હા સર ઘણી બધી રસપ્રદ વાતો કાગળ અને કાગળ નો માવો બનાવી કેવી રીતે તેનો ઉપયોગ કરવો તેના વિશે જાણવા મળી અમારા નિમંત્રણ ને માન આપી આપ આજે અમારી સાથે જોડાયા તે બદલ ફરી એકવાર કાર્યશાળા અને સૌ વતી આપનો આભાર માનું છું પ્રેક્ષક મિત્રો આ સાથે આજનો આપણો આ મંથન કાર્યક્રમ અહીં પૂરો કરીએ છીએ ફરી પાછા મળીશું આવતા સપ્તાહમાં નવા વ્યક્તિ અને તેમની રસપ્રદ વાતો સાથે ત્યાં સુધી આપ સૌ સ્વસ્થ રહો સુરક્ષિત રહો આવજો